today's change maker is William A. Hinton. And I didn't know who he was, but I was looking, you know, um, I was going to do entertainers on Friday, but I was like, nah, we know the entertainers. I'm going to double down on the people we should know. So I had a lot of um, medical people, doctors and folk that I wanted to highlight on these airwaves. So William A. Hinton, bacteria, bacteria, oh my goodness, come on, Karen, pathologist and bacteriologist, bacteriologist, uh, all right, he studied bacteria. And he was the first black tenure professor in the history of Harvard University, the first one. He also was a pioneer in the field, field of public health who developed a test for syphilis, which because of his accuracy was used by the United States Public Health Service. And I, I picked him because, you know, a lot of us don't want to get the vaccine because of the syphilis experiment and things like that. But did you know that it was a black man who was the first to come up with a test for it? The reason why we knew people had syphilis was because of William A. Hinton, Dr. Hinton. He was born December 15th, 1883 in Chicago. Both of his parents were born in bondage. He went to Harvard in 1902. So that led me down a, a rabbit hole because I know that W.E.B. Du Bois graduated, but he had a PhD. He was the first to graduate with a PhD. And I knew that Carter G. Woodson, the, the father of Black History Month, also graduated from uh, Harvard with a PhD in 1912. So I'm like 10 years before Woodson even graduated, this man got a degree, a BS, uh, from, from Harvard. So I was like, wow, he graduated from Harvard before W.E.B. Du Bois graduated with his PhD. And then I was like, who's the first person to graduate from Harvard? It wasn't him. Did you know that? So that led me down another rabbit hole. So then I ran into Richard Theodore Greener. And this is why I'm doing this, right? Because there's so much of our history that has been erased and scattered that for me, it's about putting the pieces together through these breadcrumbs. So after studying William A. Hinton, I ran into Richard Theodore Greener, who was the first person to actually graduate from Harvard. After studying at Oberlin for three years, he transferred to Harvard where he earned a bachelor's in 1870. Black man, 1870, Ooh. graduated from Harvard. He was, uh, his admission to Harvard was an experiment. Uh, by the administration. By the way, Harvard also gave us eugenics. So I'm sure it was an experiment. <laughs> uh, but they wanted to see if Black people could graduate. Not only did he do that, but he earned two, not one, but two prizes for elocution while he was there, the Bowdoin uh, Prize for elocution. That's how dope he was. His name was Richard Theodore Greener. But back to Hinton. Dr. Hinton, after getting his BS from Harvard, he went and, and taught at colleges in Nashville, Tennessee, and Oklahoma. He went to Meharry Medical College. Uh, and while he was continuing his own education, he's teaching. Because, you know, as you learn, you teach, especially back then, right? And during the summer, uh, he went to uh, University of Chicago and then went back to Harvard in 1909, where he went to uh, enroll in their medical school and was offered a scholarship that was set aside just for Black people. But he was like, nah, I'm not taking the black scholarship. I want the white scholarship. So he competed and won the prestigious Wigglesworth and Hayden scholarships two years in a row. Went there for free on a white person scholarship, earmarked for them. And um, he graduated with honors from their medical school in 1912 after only three years, which is unheard of. Now, he wanted to be a surgeon. Mr. Hinton, uh, Dr. Hinton wanted to be a surgeon, but of course, racism reared his ugly head and it, his hands are too big to do the, black people can't operate. So they stuck him in a lab and he was like, okay, in, in the Boston area. Uh, and he was working as a volunteer assist assistant in the pathology department at Massachusetts General Hospital. And for three years, he performed autopsies on people who, sus who were suspected for have, uh, of having syphilis. And that's where he came up with the test. So without this man, y'all stuck him in a lab. He probably would have been a brilliant surgeon, but y'all racist. What could he have done had he been allowed to do that? But he was like, all right, you're going to put me in a lab because I'm black. I'm going to figure this out too. Thank you to him. Dr. Hinton developed a new ser serologist, uh, sero ser I can't speak oh, today, geez. serological <laughs> test for syphilis known as the Hinton test. At least they got to put his name on it, which became the standard. In 1915, the Wasserman Laboratory was transferred from uh, HMS to the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, and Hinton was appointed assistant director of the Division of Biologic Laboratories and chief of the Wasserman Laboratory, a position which he served for 38 years. 
So today we uh, celebrate this man who also was appointed instructor uh, in immunology in 1946, 25 years uh, later uh, at uh, the Preventive Medicine and Hygiene. Uh, he was an instructor there as well. Amazing human being, amazing human being who without, we would not have had a test for syphilis. So there's that. That is William A. Hinton, our change maker for today.